Hey guys, it's Shadow Knight Paladin, and welcome back to my channel. So today, we're doing another digital piece, and this might be familiar with you if you've been watching my videos. Um, I posted a video with the line art face probably a couple of weeks back by now, and I mentioned there that I wanted to improve my digital works, and that involved actually improving a lot of my process and my style, and even though my quote-unquote style hasn't changed that much, the way that I go about things need to be improved. So I wanted to start with my line art. Uh, line art is one of my more favorite parts of a drawing. I really like seeing it come together and I, know, I just really enjoy lining things over coloring things. I guess because I don't have a lot of patience or I'm patient generally as a person but not with my art. I like seeing it done quickly and it's a bad habit but it's a habit I've been able to slowly curb, but it still pops up every now and then. So, I wanted to improve my line art by using thinning lines, uh, using varying line weights, mainly because I noticed in the past couple of months, or in the past couple of pieces that I've been doing digitally, I've been using very, very thick line art. And some people like that. I like seeing it in other people's style because they do it well, but it's not the style, that, it's not the feel that I'm going for. Um, it tends to make my pieces look rather heavy, and it loses a bit of that fantasy, soft feel that I often like going for. And also because I like having my pieces look a bit more dynamic, I think using varying line weights and thinner lines would help me achieve that goal a bit more. So yeah, actually, before we actually dive into the video a bit more, I would suggest to watch this video if you want to have it more in the background or if you're drawing yourself because this is going to be a very long video. I ended up with, just for the coloring stage alone, 12 hours of footage. So um, when I compressed it down to a 300% speed for the clips, I still ended up with Two hours and 30 minutes worth of footage so after trimming and speeding it up a bit more I still ended up with 25 minutes so if you're you know just watching it for the sake of watching it I don't mind but I'm not the type of person that likes watching art videos for a long time or if I do I tend to watch it when I'm doing something else so I would suggest that like if you're drawing yourself you just want to hear music or talking talking in the background. Um, or if you're cleaning or maybe doing some kind of chore or something. That would might be the best. Uh, that would, I, that's what I would suggest maybe. But if you want to watch it plain and simple. Well, um, that makes me feel kind of happy. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Um, where was I? Yeah. So I did talk about the line light already. So another goal... I wanted to achieve with this piece as this is a piece that is very heavy and experimenting and trying to figure things out. Um, I want my pieces to have a bit more freedom uh, in determining what kind of shape or flow I wanted to go. Um, in the past, I would always use my liner to define everything. So every strand of hair, every fold of cloth every detail i did it with line art and i found out eventually i'm not really sure when that it kind of limits um the flexibility of the piece so for example with the folds in a cape or a cloak if there's line art i can't really shift or change it without changing the line art first and it also makes my pieces look stiff so what i'm doing now except for the hair part because if you like drawing out the hair. Uh, for the clothes, I let the shadows and the highlights determine how it would look like. And it would mean that I need to put in more effort in doing those things. Because before, I'm a bit lazy with those. Uh, I was never really particularly good with doing shadows and highlights. So, um, it's probably one of the things that I developed slow, slower against everything else. But now, I'm trying to improve it. So, the technique that I'm trying to employ is how I do it with traditional pieces or with watercolor. 
um, I have that base color and then I would sort of like roughly block out the shadows and then I would blend it out a bit and then I would start adding layers and layers of different darker or different toned color to give it more depth. It makes it look a bit more visually interesting because not everything is um, like the same shading or not everything is the same tone. So it makes it look more 3D and less flat. Another thing I'm also trying to improve is using highlights. So as you can see, I'm adding some white in the more grayish hair. And that's to give it more pop, to make it not look dull, and to give the individual strands more, you know, as I mentioned earlier, depth. Um, I mentioned many, many videos back. I also want to learn how to do like maybe ambient lighting, which I'm not sure if I'm using the term correctly, but it's when your surroundings influence the color of what's on the piece. So I can sort of do it with watercolor because it just meant I would use washes and a limited color palette, but with digital, I had the problem of making it look murky. And I did practice this a bit um, with that video that had, a, that had a lot of hydrangeas. And I sort of got the technique a little bit more. I won't say I have it down, but I'm starting to understand it more. And it involves using layers, which I did use a lot, and I do use a lot, but I still stubbornly want to do everything like how I would do traditionally, which isn't a good mindset. Like, you can carry over techniques from traditional art, but this, it won't always work the same way. <laughs> So yeah, so I did mention earlier, um, this piece is a bit funny because um, I ended up with the part of footage for coloring it alone. So I maybe have another 3 to 5 hours of footage on doing the line art and the sketching phase. But this is probably the, one of the m most longest worked on pieces just based on how much hours I put into it just working. My voice is fading because this is the second time I'm recording the voiceover because apparently I covered the mic with my thumb earlier so it ruined the audio. So my voice is a bit hoarse by now. But yeah. Um, what's I saying? Yeah, the length. And also, this when I say that this piece took a long time, I also talk about it in the sense of how many months it took me to finish it. Uh, I started this in September and I live streamed everything as I usually do. I started it in September and back in the monitor for my computer was this old flat screen TV. I'm not even sure if it, uh, it's probably LED, it's flat screen, but it's one of those like older generation LED TVs. And since it's pretty old, it already had like lines and streaks on the monitor itself. So it would alter, alter the color when it hit those, you know, um, I guess, dead streaks. And also, the color on the monitor is no longer accurate. It makes the color look um, a lot less saturated and a lot duller and darker as it actually is. So when I check, for example, on my work laptop or my phone, suddenly the colors are like too bright or like it doesn't really match because the colors aren't reflecting properly on the screen. And I guess the reason, I'll explain the reason why I had to use that, that TV was because my screen for my, for my laptop cracked and it's no longer usable. So I had to like, I needed a quick fix to be able to use my laptop. And I had, well, I, ha I had to borrow that TV, basically. And around, I guess it was around November, December. I think November is the correct due time. Um, I bought a actual PC monitor from, well, actually, I won't mention it anymore. I did an unboxing explaining why I had to do that and like where I got it from, but I got a new monitor in November. So I could finally work on this again. Because I stopped working on this because the colors weren't correct and the TV was kind of dying-ish. And it was frustrating to work with. So at around November, I could finally work on this again. 
but I was busy with work. It was like the peak season because of Christmas. And I was also busy with the holidays, so it was only recently in January that I was able to actually start working on this piece again. So it took, this piece was five months in the making, and it took long not only in actually making it, but also how long it had to wait before it was finished. And I guess it really was a bit of a test. Um, it's one of those pieces that like, because I'm trying something new, because I'm doing something differently, it's taking a long time to do, but also because, yeah, that thing happened. So yeah, I'm happy it, I finally finished it. I'm actually pretty happy with how it turned out. I like how the character turned out. I like how the cloth looks. I like that. Well, the anatomy is not perfect, but it's a step up somewhat from what I used to do. The only thing that I'm not very happy about is the background, and you'll see why later when you get to it. Um... But yeah, I I feel like I've leveled up a little bit. So here, right now I'm... Well, actually, you'll see it will be jumping around a bit in the timeline because since I did have 12 hours of footage, I cut out a lot of the more repetitive parts or the parts like you kind of already know what I'm doing at that point. So, um... Don't be too surprised when you see like a certain part is done suddenly. So let's talk a bit about what I've learned. Um, aside from using more thinner line weights and thinner line art and also shadows and highlights, I also learned how to use layer styles. I'm not even properly sure if layer style is the correct term, but it's like the multiply, the burn, the overlay, um, colored no, call it dodge is wrong. Uh, dark light or light something like that. Um, it's because I started using them a lot more at work for photo manipulation. And I'm a graphic designer if you don't know. So it's somewhat part of my job to be able to do photo manipulation. And I've learned how to use them properly recently. Like I knew they existed and I knew how they worked somewhat when I was a lot younger. But... I always use them at like 100% layer opacity, so like, it always turned out pretty bad when I use them. So what I would do is I'd manually sort of paint the colors that I want on. And this especially became true when I started learning how to do traditional art properly, like with watercolor and oil and acrylics. Um, I became even more stubborn not to use layer styles because if I can do it traditionally, I should be able to do it digitally, right? Um, that's a bad mindset. They're completely different me- well, no. They're different mediums, and you can transfer over your techniques from one to the other, but... Um, don't be stubborn, like... Yeah, don't be me, don't do what I did, and try to do everything myself when layer styles exist, and I just needed to learn how to do them properly. But yeah, there's something I learned how to use very recently, and they're actually really helpful, and I really like the extra oomph they give to a piece, and I would suggest learning how to use them. It's not a cheat, they're there for a reason, and even if you have layer styles, if you're drawing underneath it that it's trying to modify shit, then you're, it won't really help much. Uh, yeah, so you, need, you still need to know your fundamentals, you still need to know what you're trying to do or what you're trying to accomplish in your life, the layer styles and the digital enhancements or the digital, digital shortcuts are just there to make your process faster, but it won't really make your art transform phenomenally. It just does a lot to help. And my voice is starting to fail. I think I need a break from talking. I'll leave you with a little bit of music for now. And we're actually working on my more favorite, my favorite part of the piece, which is the cloak. I love working on cloaks, but I also really like how this cloak turned out. So I'll be back in a minute or two.
here's one thing I really found pretty fun. Um, I am doing some sort of color blocking in the sense that I'm laying out my shadows and my highlights a bit more and just blending it together. So it really gives a more realistic and more a less stiffer look to the piece, which is something I would recommend in the future. And right now, uh, I overlaid like a darker color of, I guess a reddish, bluish, cooler tint of color. And that's to help make the inside of the cape uh, recede a bit to the background so that everything else in front, like the top of the cloak and her, the character itself would pop a bit more. Um, this is a technique so that um, yeah, it would create some sort of hierarchy or a bit more depth to the piece so that not everything is trying to grab your attention. Um, if everything is the same, like, tone of brightness or the same saturation it would try to grab the attention of the viewer and when it try, when it conflicts like that you know i don't really have it mastered yet but when it conflicts like that it makes it a bit confusing and it would overwhelm your viewer so um for example with this glove right now i'm adding shadows and highlights to it but later you'll see in a bit that i would overlay like a darker cooler toned brown to recede the color down a bit because I don't want those more leathery pieces to be like the highlight or I don't want it to be the first thing that my viewer sees. I don't want it to be the cent center of attention so by making it a bit cooler or by toning down the color and making it a bit duller it gives way to the other things I want to be the center of attention or to be the thing that I want the viewer to see first. And that's a thing you sort of learn as you draw and as you observe things more and stuff like that. I learned this particularly when I was taking up like uh, drawing classes as part of my course in college. And I did it sort of naturally because we had a lot of draw from life stuff. So I draw backgrounds, draw the school, draw buildings, draw what you see outside draw your house, draw your street, draw this person, draw this person that's naked and stuff like that, draw this glass, and you sort of develop the skill and you sort of learn it intuitively if you just properly look at things. So, and it sort of just ingrains in without you even noticing. So, that technique, that technique which I've been doing in my traditional works, I've only managed to import it recently to my digital stuff. And that's because I am no longer stubborn in refusing to use layer styles. I will use them now because they really do help achieve that thing. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. I actually do think I've improved a lot. Okay, so this part is a bit and a bit, <laughs> a bit and a bit, haha. <laughs> so this part is going to be on a bit of a hyper speed. Uh, it's a bit more sped up than the rest of the piece. But that's because this is the background. My mortal enemy. <laughs> because one, I apparently lack the patience for it. And two, I'm not very good at it. <laughs> I've learned how to do it so many times in art classes and I still can't get it down properly. And I had, well, doing backgrounds was, was a bit of a shoot-in goal for this particular piece. Originally, I just wanted to, wanted to draw the girl and her running and maybe in a grassy field. But I thought, hey, I'm pushing myself already and I'm already, already trying things out 
and trying to improve myself with this piece. Let's push it a bit more. Let's do a background. So I sketched out maybe what kind of background I wanted first and I sort of realized that the perspective looks a bit off. So I brought up like the perspective grid in Clip Studio Paint. I believe Photoshop also has this. Um, yeah, basically it just gives you like grid lines to sort of like base off your perspective. And I started drawing like columns and at this point I was starting to run out a bit of patience to work on this piece. I just wanted it done. So I started using like more harder um, shapes so it's not as blended out. Uh, but I still wanted some detail. I didn't want it to be plain. I put so much effort in the girl, so I thought, let's put a little bit of effort on the background. So I would add like little details, like little little things to make it look more like it's part of the actual piece. But nothing too detailed that would kill me, my patience, and the chance of finishing this drawing. <laughs> So I went about it in a rather roundabout way, but I actually did achieve something pretty pretty nice for me actually. Um, against the old backgrounds I used to do, I kind of do like how much more detailed and much more tied in this looks. So this is what I was mentioning earlier. Um, I'm using more toned down colors for the background, so I'm using like tans and like a bit of a reddish tone thing. So that the character who's going to be in the center later would pop out a bit more against it. So I'm using like greens, like a really, really pale uh, toned down green. And that's just to create a little bit of like more visual interest. Uh, admittedly, that green wall could use a lot of work. Originally, that's like supposed to be in the corridor, but I sort of gave up. And I didn't want to work on it that much anymore. So <laughs> I just left it like that. Like, whatever. It's a shadow. I don't know. Um, yeah. So I'm using that like that light greenish texture. And I put it on the more background-y columns. And I'm also like adding cracks to the foreground columns. Just to give it more detail. And so it wouldn't look too plain. And I was inspired because like. I think this art a la carte who was talking about it and she's like oh the devil's in the details and like I thought yeah why don't I put details in my backgrounds it's, it's a background but it shouldn't be plain and then I thought like oh but I don't have the patience for that but I also thought hey I'm pushing myself I should continue to push myself there's no reason to stop now <laughs> so what I'm doing now is I added like um I forgot what you call that style but it's like a glow-ish style to add a bit more pop to my highlights and I also wanted to give it a bit of a um, sun sun shining through the columns type of look so I'm adding that in now and I'm adding like a really you know, a simple groundish color adding some light and we're pretty much done so it's not an extremely spectacular piece but it's definitely a step up from what I used to do and I hope you guys would like this video or maybe even subscribe if you want to continue uh, joining me watching me suffer as I try to make myself improve a lot more as an artist uh, follow me on the channels that's on the screen right now and I'll see you around